This is episode 28 with Jenny Blake. Welcome to the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast, the show that empowers you to become the hero of your life's journey. With your host, Brian Tier. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to the Quarter Life Comeback Podcast and episode 28 this week. But before we get into that, I just want to take a few seconds to say how much I love and appreciate every single one of you for putting me in your ears each week and for all the positive feedback and reviews I've got for the show. Uh, It really does mean a lot to me and encourages me to keep going. And uh, if you haven't left a review or a rating yet, you can do so on iTunes at bryantier.com slash iTunes. It's as simple as that. And I'd love to hear from you um, with all your feedback and positive comments. Anyway, on to this week's show. And I am super excited to be speaking to one of my favorite people all time online. And that is Jenny Blake. Now, Jenny is an author, career and business strategist and an international speaker who helps people organize their brain, move beyond burnout and build sustainable, dynamic careers that they love. Jenny's also the author of Pivot, The Only Move That Matters is Your Next One, which if you're listening to this on the day of release, it actually goes out tomorrow on the 6th of September. And she also wrote Life After College, which is based on her blog of the same name. Today, you can find her at JennyBlake.me, where where she explores systems at the intersection of mind, body, and business. In her latest book, Pivot, Jenny outlines a four-step process for making a change in your career or your life, which we get into on the call. Now, as I expected, Jenny shared some real gold in this interview, and I had a hard time just choosing my favorite tweetable quote, which you can see at the show notes. In this episode, you're going to learn how your career and life is like a smartphone, and you don't want to miss this, how to juggle your multiple passions and interests, the difference between a pivot and a 180, the four stages of a successful career pivot, how to know when it's time for a change, and why there's no such thing as a quarter-life crisis. As always, you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at the show notes, which you'll find at bryantier.com slash 028. But for now, sit back, relax, and let's go hang out with Jenny Blake. Welcome back, everyone, and a huge welcome to today's guest. I'm super excited to be speaking to Jenny Blake. Jenny, thanks for coming to the Quarter Life Comeback. Brian, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, and I, I said to you before this call, when I first started the podcast um, and thinking about like how can I add as much value to 20-somethings and even 30-somethings, I immediately thought of crazy guests I'd love to have on, and you were right up on top of that list. So I really... I'm really excited to have you on and to get this message out there. Well, I'm so honored. And isn't that wild? Because I'm doing a podcast too. And when you email people totally on a whim and just hope for the best. And it's always so exciting when someone like that says yes. So I'm just honored that I can complete this circle of of (laughs) podcast love. Yeah, I always tell people like people with big presences online seem like untouchable or unreachable but everyone really wants to help everyone else so yeah it's it's not as bad as it seems and what i love about podcasts is that everybody gets something out of it i mean it's fun to just jump on and have a conversation Mm. and it's such a cool format i think the podcasting format is allowing people to connect with potential mentors and friend tours because it's it is helping spread the word about somebody's work, and yet you still get to ask them questions as if it were a private coffee talk. Yeah, it's it's insane the time we live in, like access to things we would never dream of before. But Jenny, um, before we get any further, why don't we start right at the beginning and uh, you tell the listeners just who is Jenny Blake and what your quarter life journey looked like? Sure, I am an author, speaker, and career in business. Well, I do a lot of different things consulting, (laughs) but I would say my journey has been, I've been blogging and running my online websites, Life After College and JennyBlake.me for 10 years total. I I left school early to 
work at a startup company and two years in, I hit a plateau and I moved over to Google. Two years into that, I hit a plateau and pivoted inside the company to a career development role. And then after five and a half years at Google, I left and moved to New York from the Bay Area to start my own business. And now I've been doing that for five years. And even within that, have hit plateaus and had to figure out what's next. Mm -hmm. So my quarter life journey has been one of realizing that this thing that we call the quarter life crisis or even the midlife crisis is not a one and done scenario anymore. Even if it once was, even if 10 years ago you could get away with just having a quarter life crisis, I started to notice that I was having what felt like one every few years and that either there was something very wrong with me and I was never going to be happy or we're all experiencing this more frequently. And I started to do research for my book, Pivot, that comes out this fall. And I realized that the latter proved to be true, that actually all of us by choice and by circumstance are being asked to answer this question, what's next, much more frequently than in the past. Mm. So it never ends, basically. <laughs> no, and we can learn to love that mm. instead of rejecting it and even instead of calling it a crisis. And that's why I love the name of your podcast because you're turning it on its head as well yeah. and of your work that it's okay as the first step here is accepting this new landscape and not expecting that we're just going to coast. <laughs> we were going to decide something and coast because actually if that were the case, we would be bored. Mm -hmm. And it's very likely that for anyone listening to your show, that's true for you too, that there is some amount of us that we'd like adventure and challenge and growth and making an impact. And so we can embrace this new landscape. And just as you said, there's more opportunity now than ever as well. Mm -hmm. So Jenny, you you obviously you've touched on the fact that you know you work for a startup and Google. So you've worked done some pretty big work. Um, I'm interested to find out what prompted writing Life After College, and just if you could give us kind of the Cliff Notes version of what that book's all about. Life After College is a portable life coach for twenty somethings, and I had when I left school early, I felt very alone in that, and I didn't know which end was up. I didn't know the first thing about finances or budgeting or health insurance or what to where to work or what time to get there and leave every day. I mean, there were so many questions. I ended up reading almost 200 personal development books. By now, it's probably in the 500s. <laughs> and I wanted to distill the best of what I learned for recent grads. So I wanted to create the roadmap or guidebook that would walk people through 10 areas of their life, including things like work, money, friends, family, dating and relationships, health and fitness. And my hope was that I had done all this research. So how can I make this process more efficient? There's so many people graduating every year. Why does everyone need to feel so lost? And that's the same reason that I wrote Pivot, because I felt like, why is it taking me so long and so much angst and anxiety to answer this question, what's next? And can I reverse engineer a, a method so that other people can answer this question more efficiently, myself included, moving mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, I love that. And it's kind of like the same reason I started this podcast is to just help make other people's um, struggle, if you want to call it that, just that little bit easier and expose them to people they maybe haven't heard of before. Um, and just, yeah, everybody wins, basically. And what one of the um, sort of one of my favorite things that I've heard from you, um, I think it was in the WTF course with uh, Jacob Sokol, um, you described life as a smartphone. And I wonder if you could just go into that a little bit. The career ladder is out. That is done. If we do not follow a linear process anymore, nor do we stay at the same job for 30 years. I mean, if, if some people do, they're going to be rare cases at this point. So instead, I encourage people to think of your career like a smartphone. And it's up to you to download apps for different skills, interests, and experiences. And you can think about your education and your upbringing is your out-of-the-box model, but you get to customize it from there. And some apps are small, like taking cooking classes. Other apps are bigger, like going to graduate school or starting your own business. And when you think of it this way, some of the same principles apply. You need to clear clutter. You can't have too many apps running at once. You need to recharge. So physical practices are really important. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, your whole OS needs an upgrade. And those are the bigger pivot points that we reach, but that by downloading apps and running small experiments, you can think of your career in a much more modular sense instead of feeling the pressure 
to make these big leaps from one rung of the ladder up to the next rung. And if you fall off, you die. <laughs> I love it. I, I really love that image. Um, Jenny, you mentioned in the intro that you do a lot of things. Um, I mean, you into yoga and you had Google, obviously, and coaching and speaking and writing and all these different things, which I love. Um, but if someone's listening to this and they've got a lot of passions themselves, but they're not sure how to turn them into a career or how to balance all these passions, what advice would you have to someone in that situation? Having a diverse range of talents is a good thing. It actually helps differentiate you. So the, I would just start asking the questions. One, what do all of these things have in common? And they may not. They may be very different from each other, but how can I combine them in a unique way to add value to the market? Those are two sort of, I call them umbrella questions that you can ask. And then the third is, don't be afraid to experiment with each one. And I think of it like racehorses at the starting gate of something like the Kentucky Derby. You don't know yet which of them is going to have the most energy and momentum or even that you're going to enjoy the most. So, but eventually one will emerge. One will kind of take the lead. So experimentation is really important. And then also connecting your variety of interests to your existing experience. And that's really important. One of the most successful thing, pip, thing that pivoters do is double down on their existing strengths and work experience and what they're already doing. And that's why it's called a pivot and not a 180. So it's really important to build from where you already are rather than trying to start from scratch if you don't want to send yourself into your panic zone. Sometimes, and of course, there's really heroic stories written about people who seem to take great leaps or start from scratch. But most often, if you unpack their pivots, there's a series of smaller steps that led the way and that eventually combine. And one very interesting thing that a lot of pivoters I interviewed for the book said is, wow, it feels like my whole life and career has been preparing me for this. There does come a day when all of your unique interests can combine. Mm. And you may not see that yet, but don't give up on them, at least not the ones that really bring you a lot of energy and joy. Mm, I love that. And it's it's something that uh, Caroline Beaton echoed in in my interview with her too. I think it was episode 17, which I'll link up. Um, but yeah, basically linking all your different interests and seeing where that sort of common area is. So Jenny, we've touched on Pivot quite a lot now. Um, so I'd like to get into the book a bit more and just sort of the 80-20 of what it's all about, who's it for, and, and all that good stuff. I wrote the book for a group that I call high net growth individuals or impactors because once these are people who don't just care about money, they really care about learning and growing and ultimately making an impact. And this, this is people of all ages and all stages, all bank account balances. And the crux of it, the 80 20, as you say, is double down on what's working to shift methodically into what's next mm -hmm. and run small experiments to help you do that. Cool. And uh, I saw on your on, on the Pivot website, which I'll link up in the show notes, um, I think you cover kind of a four-step process to make this happen. Is that is that correct? Yeah, there are four stages. I use a basketball player analogy that helped me start to conceptualize this, which is the, the stages are plant, scan, pilot, launch. And if you think of a basketball player, once they stop dribbling, they ground down with their plant foot. That foot does not move, and it provides stability. In a pivot sense, those are your strengths, your existing strengths, interests, and experience. And the plant foot is also about your one-year vision. What does success look like a year from now? And trying to articulate all the known variables then the basketball player can scan with their pivot foot so they can look for passing options around the court. In career terms, that's looking for skills, people to connect with, and projects that you might want to pursue. And the skills are important because to get from where you are now to where you want to be a year from now, usually there's some learning to close that gap. And then the third stage pilot in the basketball player analogy, it's passing the ball around the court and looking for different options. Where's the best perspective to make a shot? So in pivot terms, that's about small experiments. And you can repeat plant scan pilot over and over until you feel like you've reduced risk enough to take a shot and to launch. So launch doesn't have to be some blind leap. It's really the final 10 to 20 percent where you pull the trigger and go all in on the new direction. Some people can be perfectly happy doing plant scan pilot 
over and over for years. There's nothing saying you have to launch. But if there is a scenario where it means leaving a job or starting something new, that's where the launch comes in. And if you're not ready to launch, it's likely that you need to plant, scan, and pilot. Like go back to your strengths and what's already working, scan again for opportunities related to that, and then pilot. Mm. Keep running those experiments. And how do we know if it's time to to make a pivot in our in our careers? Most people either have a vague sense, like work is fine, but they're <laughs> kind of bored, or it's worse, or they feel anxiety, dread, physical symptoms, letting them know something is off. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes the pivot points whisper to us softly, like, psst. Uh, what if something? What if there's something else out there? You know, and then sometimes they're sort of whacking us in the face if we don't listen, and sometimes if we wait too long to pivot, change chooses us, and the company reorgs, or you know, you might get laid off, or you lose your biggest client, and something shocking happens that wakes us up, and. I, you know, it's not that we would ever wish ill upon anyone, but that a lot of times these are, serve as blessings in disguise. People almost. Everyone I interviewed looked back at those moments and said, I'm so glad that happened. Mm. That's really what I needed to make a change. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of like the call in the Euro's journey. And like, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then going into the darkness and all of those things, like it's darkest before mm. the dawn. So many, there's such a part of pivoting, which is saying no to something and going into the unknown. I almost... We ended up having to cut it for space, but had a whole section in the book called Surf the Void, which was about how to deal with that dark place before and in the hero's journey before the hero emerges. Mm -hmm. And that when you're in your darkest, lowest moments, that a mentor or some kind of helper, some grace appears, but it can feel very, very confusing in the midst of the unknown. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's a big part of the quarter life crisis is that confusion. Yes. And then taking that confusion personally. So it's not just having the confusion. It's then saying there's something wrong with me. And believe me, this is what I did for the last 10 years until I started. I got fed up. I just thought I can't live like this. I am too sensitive for my own life. And part of it was because I at every one of the pivot points that I had and I described in the beginning, I kept saying, what's wrong with me? Am I entitled? Am I one of those entitled millennials that will never be happy? Why can't I be happy? I keep trying to take action toward what I think is going to work. And then, and then I hit this pivot point again, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Mm. And I, I, my hope for everyone listening to this is to say, there's nothing wrong with you. You're totally normal. Pivot points are normal. They don't have to be a problem. Hitting a plateau is usually a sign that you've succeeded at something, actually. And it's not that we want to live on the plateau forever. But to not say that, oh, you've done something wrong, that actually it's fine. We're all doing that. And we're hitting them more often. So instead of wasting time and energy saying what, taking it personally, it's much more effective and more fun to just ask, okay, great. I'm here. I'm at this pivot point or this plateau. Now what? How can I, what is working that I want to keep? What can I double down on? And what experiments can I run? Mm. Yeah. And I think Jacob likes to say, you know, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? We, we shift that and say, why is this happening for me? Yes. And I just heard Tony Robbins say that on a podcast. And another friend told me that same line earlier in the week. So this is this is now the fourth time in a week that this phrase has come up. This is happening for me, not to me. And I think it's fun in your own life to pay attention to coincidences like this. So for me, this, I don't know, you know, I'm feeling pretty good, but clearly the message has now come in so strong and maybe it's one that's meant to be spread. And for, for anyone listening, it's so fun to play I learned this from an author named Penny Pierce, where maybe you're listening to a song lyric and it jumps out. Or while you're listening to a song, one word is the same as a word you're seeing on a billboard. Or to more than one person, what, whatever people, friends want to come talk to you about, that everything is information. And we can actually see every little thing in our day as part of that happening for you. Mm. Fun. Yeah. Uh, now, Jenny, we've been speaking about pivots, and I just want to clarify for people listening, it doesn't need to be a major career shift like quitting your job. Um, and it can just be something as simple as, you know, changing departments within your same company. Um, yes. 
Is that what it can you- even be pivoting within your role. It can be maybe you don't even change departments. Maybe you're just assessing where am I now and where do I want to be a year from now. So pivot is a process that you can work through. I even worked through the pivot method when I got stuck on writing the book. So if you hit a plateau in a project, you can look and say, okay, I'm stuck. Well, what is working? What do I want to keep? What do, Where's my vision? What do I want this to end up as? And then close that gap. So yeah, Brian, I'm really glad you said that. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, Jenny, I do want to be mindful of time, but there's a couple of questions that I like to ask all guests that I'd love to run through. And uh, sure. the first one is, what do you wish you'd been told in your 20s? That there is no such thing as a midlife and quarter life crisis. I... I read all the books. I, I really, I wish someone would have said, no, these, these names are wrong. They're, it's more frequent than that. Mm. So when you say and there's so no such right. thing, when you say there's no such thing, you mean it's not just a one-time thing. It's just a part of life and something that we face all the time. Yeah. And I think right now that there's a lot of like shame and blame around especially young people, millennials or younger generations when they're experiencing this. And we, we sort of, they get a bad rap in the media for caring about wanting to do meaningful work or wanting to leave their job until they find that. And I just, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think that nobody's saying to go be a reckless job hopper that quits the second things get hard. But on the other hand, I do think people are redefining success and saying my job isn't guaranteed either you know even if I wasn't this wily millennial there's no guarantee that my company wouldn't let me go in a year so I think people are smart to diversify and have side hustles and be experimenting with a lot of different things cool um what do you think is the greatest opportunity for quarter lifers today technology is incredible it is easier than ever I know this is People say this a lot at this point, but to start a business from your laptop, but truly, whether you want to earn extra income or learn a new skill or just express yourself creatively, there's so much at our fingertips already. And even on our phone, even if you don't have a laptop anymore, you can create so much just from your phone alone. And so don't wait for someone to give you permission to start. Just tinker and experiment and don't even wait till you're an expert that just st- get that ball rolling on, on creating something and it feels really good no matter what results. Hmm. Alrighty, two to go. <laughs> um, I've asked this next one to a couple of guests and feel free to take it in whatever direction you interpret. But if this had to become the most important um, audio or podcast for people in their 20s to hear, what would I need to ask you and how would you answer that? Hmm. It would be some question, the one that popped into my mind, which is more a question for the listeners, not me. What do you already know to be true? That I want to empower everyone listening, that you don't even need me, some supposed expert to tell you what to do, that your body has all the wisdom and knowledge that you need. And I think meditation is a really, really helpful practice that certainly has been for me. And the reason is that you get to close your eyes and go inward and start to develop trust in your own inner wisdom that you already know the answers. And you may not have everything mapped out a zillion steps in advance, but you don't need to. The subtitle of my new book is The Only Move That Matters Is Your Next One. So can you get quiet enough to hear your next move speak to you Mm. and that you already have what it takes to get there? Mm, I love that. Jenny, if people are listening to this and they want to find out more about you and the work that you do and all your books coming out, um, what's the best way for them to do so? The best place right now is pivotmethod.com. I also have a podcast, which you can subscribe wherever you listen to casts. It's called Pivot Podcast. And if anyone wants more personalized support, I have this amazing team of six pivot coaches, and they do one-month jumpstart sessions. So that can be a great way to kickstart your pivot planning process. And that's at pivotmethod.com slash coaching. And then everything else about me is at jennyblake.me and on Twitter at jenny underscore blake. Cool. And I'll definitely link up to all those good places in the show notes. Uh, Jenny, before I get on to the final question, I just want to take a second to acknowledge you for 
for sharing everything you've learned along the way um, in your own life after college and through all your own pivots in your really wide and diverse career. Um, I think it's awesome how you've, you know, you've um, had experience in yoga and coaching and at startups and uh, obviously Google and all the good stuff that you're doing and uh, sharing that and making your tools and systems available for so many people. I highly recommend everyone go check those out too. Um, and I wish you all the best success for Pivot. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Uh, but the final question that I do have is what one thing can listeners do this week to start creating their own quarter life comeback? Well, first, Brian, thank you so much for the kind words and huge thanks to everyone for being here listening. Well, one thing, see, I'm going to turn it back on everyone listening and I want you to ask yourself, what one thing can I do? What one thing, and you can ask this in two ways. You can say, what one next step can I do the quickest that you can do even today after listening to this podcast? And what one next step would make the biggest impact? Mm -hmm. You can ask those two questions over and over. You can ask them of yourself every day or every week until you start really feeling momentum on your side. Mm. I love it. Jenny Blake, thank you so much for coming on the Quarter Life Comeback. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me. And thanks, everyone, for being here. So there you have it, guys and girls. That wraps up this week's episode of the Quarter Life Comeback podcast. And once again, massive thanks to Jenny Blake for coming on the show today. Uh, one of my favorite people online, and I'm sure you can see why. If you like this episode, make sure you share it around with your friends and shoot me a tweet at Brian Tia and at Jenny underscore Blake. And let me know what some of your favorite takeaways were. For me, it's definitely the fact that there's no one thing known as the quarter life crisis. There's just different stages of our life where we have to make some decisions and make small pivots. And as Jenny said, you know, this doesn't have to be a major career shift or a new job or anything, but it can be a tiny shift in a different direction. As always, you can get the links and resources we mentioned in this episode at bryantier.com slash 028. And if you like Jenny's stuff, make sure you go and pre-order or purchase her book. That's Pivot. And you'll find that at all good bookstores. In the meantime, thanks once again for joining me. And I'll catch up with you next week for another episode of The Quarter Life Comeback. Thanks for listening to The Quarter Life Comeback. Get started today by visiting bryantier.com.